What is going on, guys? Today we are talking about um, a little bit of a hot topic in the uh, Pokemon community, which is Pokemon investing. Um, so this is, uh, if you guys aren't familiar, there was a uh, creator, OK J Love, who made a uh, a video kind of. And you guys can watch it. I'll leave a, a link down below. But he kind of was calling out um, Pokemon investing, kind of saying it was dumb. Um, and anyways, it ended up in a live stream, uh, with, I think there was like six creators in there. Uh, it was, it ended up being like, I think it was like four hours, I believe, or something like that for the whole stream. And they talked, it ended up kind of essentially being OKJ OK Love versus Nostalgenomics and kind of his side of everything. And I just wanted to talk about... Pokemon investing versus collecting and my take on all of this. Um, some of it was very interesting. Um, I, w I did watch... Uh, I originally watched... Um, I saw it from Nostalgenomic Alex. Uh, his video first. It was the first thing I saw about this. And then I watched the live stream. Um, and I, I couldn't finish the live stream. Because uh, I didn't think it was... It, it seemed a little bit like a tacky... And I didn't think it was that well done, but I did go back and finish watching the whole thing. So let me just, let's just dive straight into this. So um, in Alex Nostalgenomics video, which I'll link all of them below, um, he was just kind of talking about how sealed Pokemon collecting. Um, so th also, this is all relevant if you're just a collector or investor, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of all relevant and I'm going to explain why. So just bear with me. He was explaining why um, sealed Pokemon collecting is a safe and smart investment. And he showed some numbers um, where if you're buying, like, I think it was one of each booster box, like all the way back to the XY era, how you would outpace the S&P 500, um, 401k with like employer matching and like all of that stuff. And I thought he did that uh, pretty well. Um, and that was including like... Um, he was taking out eBay fees. He was taking out shipping costs. Like, so it seemed, you know, obviously, as a both sealed investor and collector myself, I tend to agree. Uh, a lot of my views tend to align. Not everything, obviously, but uh, I I'm fairly similar with what Alex has going on. But, um, anyways, so he made that video and then ended up hopping on the live stream. Um, cool trainer Ryan even ended up hopping on there, um, towards the end. Um, he's kind of a, he was the, definitely the biggest name of everyone in there. But, um, first off, let's just talk about collecting investing, collect what you want. Like I, I know that a lot of people say that, but it really is true. Like, um, you don't have to collect anything that anyone else is just collect what you think is cool. Um, and, and it, it, that's like at the base of everything, because why, why do you, why do I invest, um, in sealed product or in anything, uh, like Pokemon stuff? It's because it started with, it's all collecting. It started with collecting. If you don't have an interest in it, um, sure. There's some people who, um, who don't have an interest. They're not collectors first. They're just investors and flippers. And uh, I'll get to that, but, um, collect what you want. Okay. Um, now here's a, a take that was generally um, generally agreed upon in this like roundtable of uh, the the live stream was that money matters. So do you like cards only because of the money? Like for me, no, I don't. But if the cards held little to no value, I wouldn't like. I obviously. There's just the human nature of chasing. You want the chase card. You want the most valuable card. Um, this has been the case in Pokemon since... Uh, in cards. Pokemon cards. Since the beginning. I remember growing up uh, when the TCG like was first popping. In 1999, right? Charizards. Everyone was like, the price of the Charizard. You know, that first edition. Charizard was... And, and it was how much it was worth. was wild at the time. Especially to a kid. Um... So money does matter. It affects what you want to collect. It it really it really does for for almost all collectors, right? And I'm I'm guilty of it. 
I don't always just collect what I think is cool. Um, and I wouldn't be as into it if there wasn't monetary value. Now, I'm not looking in... This is not... Um, I'm, I preach, like, transparency. I'm not some whale who has, like, millions of boxes, millions of dollars worth of boxes and all this stuff. Like, I've always told you guys what I have. And if you guys want to know further, like, I've already made videos, but I'll show you. We can talk. I got a spreadsheet that shows, like, exactly what I have. It's not, it's not a ton. But we'll get more into that. Um, I got a little list we're, we're kind of working through. Um, so, you know, the price of cards matters. Um, and, you know, I agree. Um, something else that is, is um, I don't know if it's a hot take, but um, it's a little bit related, is that grading cards is dumb. But I do it. I do it. I collect PSA 10s. I want PSA 10s. I grade cards, okay? Um, when you think about if you want to be, like, a better collector, though, like, to collect the most stuff, don't collect graded cards. That's dumb. Just get the cards you want. Um, you know, put them in your binder, however you want to display them. They don't have to be graded. Um, but people like the money. So grading is going to be a thing. Grading is a huge thing, okay? Um, I do enjoy, I enjoy grading. I think it's really fun to comb through my cards. I spend hours looking through my cards, inspecting them, um, and submitting the best ones. And I love getting the return, you know, doing the reveal and everything. Um, and I like, I do like uh, selling them on, like, it does feel good too, to get a card for a few bucks, grade it, and then sell it for a profit on eBay. That That is something that I enjoy. Um, so, and also, well, um, it's just, it, at the end of the day, do what you want. Like, you don't have to do everything that everyone else does. But, um, sorry, I was getting a little sidetracked here. Okay, something else that was talked about. This was, like, the big point. One of the big points, I think, of J-Love. He was saying that nobody knows what's going to happen with uh, Pokemon. Like, that you can't predict. You can't say that, um, oh, these uh, boxes are going to go to X dollar. Which, of course, I... You cannot say that nobody knows that. But what you can say for somewhat relative certainty is that when you are buying sealed booster boxes, packs, but I mean, we'll mainly talk booster boxes, ETBs, whatever. Um, we we'll use booster boxes for the example. When you're buying sealed booster boxes below MSRP, when you can get them when they first come out or a few months after for 70, high 70s, like, so we'll say 80, 90, even $100 and the MSRP is 143 and coming into the Scarlet and Violet era, guys, the MSRP is in the 160s. So um, there has never been, this is what Alex was preaching, which is true, there's never been a Pokemon box that is below MSRP. Like, when they first come out, yes. Like, you can get them, but after time, after years. So that was his whole point of, of kind of like, it's safer in some ways than like crypto because if you think crypto is just it, it's they're not a physical thing boxes are a physical thing right supply and demand and they're they've never gone traditionally from 1999 to now they've never gone below msrp so worst case scenario if you're getting in at a hundred dollars we'll say a hundred on the high end you're gonna be able to sell them for 140 okay so, um, it is possible that they can go below that. Of course, anything is possible and nobody, nobody, nobody knows. Nobody can predict anything for certain, but if you are grabbing a wide range of boxes and you're smart about what you're doing, you're going to be, you're going to be just fine. Okay. So that, that, so that is just like a, a pretty broad statement that I feel like can be easily agreed upon. Cool trainer Ryan agreed. They kind of ended up like agreeing, but it just didn't. The stream, you guys go check it out. It was a little. I didn't like how it was ran, but um, yeah. If you're gonna grab boxes, like essentially, like Cool Train and Ryan, and you know, I agree. Everyone agrees. Buy boxes, sit on them. If you're gonna sit on them for years, five, ten years, fifteen years, you're gonna do well. It's okay. That's like that's that's fairly obvious at this point, I think, and um, 
you know, uh, this is a point I was gonna bring up later, but speaking of that, like, how do you, how can you say that is, this is kind of how you, Pokemon is the highest grossing, like, IP or franchise, uh, you guys can look it up, like, of, it's the highest one of all time, right? So, it's the number one thing for, uh, you know, across all of its sales of, like, everything, right? The show and cards and everything. So, even if that drops, even if even if that drops off of number one someday, um, there's still going to be monetary value there, and it's going to be high, um, depending on the on the demand. So, just it it's it's not a bad thing to invest in a to get boxes that will the supply will shrink. It shrinks over time as people open it. Of the number one highest grossing franchise of all time, like. It's pretty, it's fairly safe. You know, nothing is ever 100%. Real estate's not 100%. Nothing, like, also real quick, um, I'm not really calling anybody out, but, uh, or anything like that. I just, but uh, I did find it interesting how um, they did ask, I think Alex asked, okay, J-Love, like, well, they said, because he said he didn't invest in sealed Pokemon, which is fine. No, it's not for everybody. You don't have to do it. Nobody cares if you don't do it. But he said, what do you invest in? And he kind of said nothing. He said he had a house, but he doesn't invest in real estate. He doesn't invest in anything, which is fine. Do whatever you want. Like, nobody cares. But if you're calling somebody out for investing and you don't really invest, I thought that was just a little weird. Um, all right. So next up on the list, what do we got here? Okay. Why do I invest um, in sealed products? So not just um, – I invest in sealed product, like singles, slabs, sports cards, Um you know, all sorts of stuff, right, that I, I'm investing in. And for me, I'm investing um, to grow my collection. And that's the bottom line. I like collecting and I'm passionate about it. So it, if I can make some money um, along the way and have some booster boxes that I have in my office here or wherever that I get to look at, so I get enjoyment out of my um out of my investments right um i can see them i can handle them it's different than the stock market and like 401k is like those are safe and whatever and you know it, they're their own thing and i'm not judging it but like you don't get anything out of that okay um physically you, you know you get money after a long time and you don't really know exactly where your money's going and all that it can be you know, but so I want to grow my collection. And if I get to sell some boxes along the way and something I'm really passionate about, then, then that's great. Like I'm not, um, I think a lot of the times people are thinking back to like COVID times and scalping and stuff. So scalping is different than investing. I'm not going out and buying out all the product at every, like my local target and Walmart. Um, so if I can hold on to some boxes because I have some discipline and not open them and sell them um, down the line and make money off of that so I can get more of the cards that I want um, and keep some of the boxes because I think that's kind of cool to have them as like display pieces as well. Um, that's why I invest. I don't. I, um, let me know in the comments why you guys invest, okay? Um, but that is just me personally. Um, I'm not investing to get rich. I'm not trying to retire off of Pokemon or sports cards or anything. Um, I could one day if it, if I, if I keep doing well and, you know, I might have a, I do think it'd be cool to open a card shop in my local area, um, kind of expand, make it, maybe make it into a business where I could do it more full time because I do enjoy it. Um, but right now I'm just doing it to expand my collection. It's as simple as that. Um, most people who, who would be called, um, investors like myself, um, there's always exceptions. There's whales out there. Most people who are doing this, though, don't have a lot of product. They're not sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars or even $10,000 worth of product. They got some booster boxes, you know, um, throw, them, throw them in the closet, right? Um, and, you know, there's varying levels of that. There's people who can't, they're buying just packs because they can't afford it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do it however you want and with whatever money you can set aside to do it. Like there's nothing wrong with that. So I think though that some of the misconception that was coming out was thinking that everyone is dumping their whole, you know, all this money 
into just having boxes for investing and i think that that's a bit misleading while there are people who do obviously i just i think that the average pokemon investor whether you're watching this video now whether you're on reddit whatever and you're into pokemon investing you're doing it on a small scale and there's nothing wrong with that so um while there is lots of product being set aside i don't always think that it is to the scale that some that some people were kind of claiming but um so there is that um i do think that the idea of the stream itself and the conversation and everything is good it's something that um that i, I thought was an interesting you know like have a debate talk about it whatever um i just thought it was kind of a little poorly done i think there's maybe too many people um some people didn't really get to talk and then it was talking over it was hard you know it's kind of a hard thing to put on um so keep that in mind but um yeah so that was kind of and it, it, it did feel a little bit a little bit of tacky uh, at um it was kind of like <laughs> a tacky at nomics nostalgia nomics alex and then like kind of one of the other guys on their poke office was like kind of lumped and they were kind of together and yeah, it just it felt a little bit one-sided at times, um, and I just wanted to kind of touch on in the whole entire thing, the video, the stream, my thoughts on what I'm doing, what what investing is to me, and everything. So um, that's kind of it. Uh, we're gonna kind of just wrap this up. I know this is going on for a while. Um, this is one of my longer videos. I don't normally go this long. Um, one last thing I wanted to bring up to you guys, if you um, if you caught any of that. Um, was why was this brought up in the way that it was brought up? Um, was was Jlov just trying to get clicks, get followers? Um, which you know, nothing really wrong with that. But I just I just didn't understand why it was the way it was. Let me know what you guys think. Um, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. I just wanted to just kind of wanted to ramble. I was traveling, uh, visiting some family uh, in North Carolina, traveling across the country, and in between flights, I was uh, getting the whole, getting the whole, listening to the whole thing. So, um, yeah, I've been back. I just got back, so kind of wanted to make a video on it. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Um, thank you, thank you guys for watching. I uh, really appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.